There is a pretty common misconception that you need all quads for game assets. And I'm going to explain why this is simply wrong and why people get confused over this. But it's not true. It's completely false. And I'm going to show you why here. So let's just hop right into it. By the way, if you're not on our email list, there are still three days left to pick up our entire Hard Surface Game Asset 2.0 course for just 57 bucks. We have not ran a sale this low for this course in months. I'll link that program in the description. Again, there are three days left to pick it up at just 57 bucks. And this is basically gonna teach you our Mad T Hard Surface Game Asset Workflow for Blender. Nobody else is teaching this. This is a very unique workflow that applies specifically for Hard Surface Game Assets and even allows you to use N-Gons very effectively. So again, I'll link that program in the description below. You can pick it up for only 57 bucks for the next three days. So what I have here is a model. This is from our uh, Sub-D program, but you're gonna see if I go into wireframe, it's all quads here. Let me just delete this so you can see it easier. You see this entire thing is quads and you know we have our sub D modifier, you know I can reduce the resolution, things like that. But the entire thing, you know, is made of quads here. Like even these small details, they're all modeled in, as you can see. Not decals, not booleans, nothing. This is all a quad-based model here, okay? The reason so many people say that you need quads for a game asset is uh, is very simple, and I don't think I've seen a single video really covering this. So let me show you. If I were to take, it, it can be any piece in here. This whole thing is made of quads, so maybe I'll just take this piece for example, okay? So you're gonna see we have all quads here, all right? Now, if I were to go here and add a modifier and I'm gonna to go to triangulate, which I believe is under generate. We're gonna to go to triangulate, okay? And that's gonna be at the bottom of the stack here. Triangulate modifier should always be uh, the last thing to be added, all right? And by the way, the reason the resolution is kind of changing is because um, the sub D modifier here, if I turn this off, is set to optimal display. If I were to turn that off, it's gonna show you the actual topology here. But if I turn on the triangulate, you're gonna see exactly what happens. When you're dealing with a quad-based model, just like this here, there is only one single way you can triangulate a quad. It, it's, it's literally impossible to triangulate it any other way. And let me show you what I mean. If I go to mesh and then plane, there's only two physical ways I can triangulate this, right? I can go from this vertex to this vertex, or I can go from this vertex to this vertex. Either way, it doesn't really matter, right? If I go here to here, it's it's just the edge, right? So obviously, in this case, there's only one way to triangulate a quad. It's it's literally just corner to corner. Doesn't matter which corner, you kind of get the idea here. And the same thing is kind of happening here. We have all quads, so the triangulate modifier can really only connect it in one way. There's no other physical way. It's physically impossible to triangulate this any other way. It's just a, a physical impossibility. It's corner to corner. Now the reason a lot of people say you can't you know, use n-gons in a game asset is because n-gons can be triangulated a variety of ways, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and add in a plane here and we're gonna make this into an n-gon just to kind of show you what I mean. And then we'll just go in here, maybe just do something like that. So we have a pretty obvious n-gon here. Now think of how many different permutations you know you can go through. I could join this, then join this, and then join this. Or rather, you know, join it like this. You know, that's one way to get these all into triangles, right? You know, I could also go here to here, and then you know, here to here. Right? There's a bunch of different combinations really. You can go here to here. I think we already did this one, but you kind of get the idea. There's a bunch of different ways that I could basically, you know, triangulate. This object here, it's already like the third one. So, you know, the more complex the end gone, the more, you know, different ways we could possibly triangulate this. Now, the issue that a lot of people encounter is they'll take an object with end gons and they'll just straight up export that object to a game engine. They'll just export it without any triangulation in Blender and then they'll just bring it into a game engine. Well, this is an issue is because of different engines, you know, Substance Painter, Unreal, Unity, all these different software they have different triangulation algorithms. You know, maybe one 
software triangulates like this, while maybe another software triangulates, you know, like this. Join here to here, join here to here. You kind of get the idea. So maybe another software triangulates it this way. And then just to really emphasize this more, maybe another software triangulates it like this. See what I mean? Now you might not really understand why this is a problem, but I'm going to show you. So what I have here is the mech from our hard surface accelerator course. And I do want to clarify that this course was not designed uh, as a game asset, so it wasn't optimized for that. I just want to let you know. But this is a really good example to show you what I mean. So if I were to take this entire object here, okay, and just straight up export this, you, you see there's n-gons everywhere. And again, you know, these details aren't baked or anything. This is much higher resolution because this wasn't meant to be a game asset. I just want to demonstrate the problem. If I just export this entire thing, you know, with n-gons everywhere, some of it's going to display fine and others are not going to display fine for, you know, the reasons I mentioned. So let's go ahead and just export this guy, export FBX, and I'm just going to call this n-gons, okay? Now, I forgot I don't have Unreal installed. We'll just use Substance Painter instead. I'm going to import this. And just going to wait for this to load in. Okay. And we're going to see how this looks. Some of this is not going to display properly at all. So we're just going to kind of move in here. I'm not worried about the shading issues. I want to show you right here. Take a look at this. This area, let me just make this um, lighting a bit different. This area is not being displayed properly. If we go into Blender, you're going to see we have these little vents here in the front. Those are displaying fine. But here in Substance, these are not displaying fine because what's happening is the triangulation here that Substance is using is causing overlaps in the mesh, and Substance Painter cannot physically display overlaps. In other areas here, you know, we, yes, we have shading errors, um, but, the, but it's actually displaying fine. Let's keep looking around. I'm sure there's going to be more. Some areas are fine, other areas are not going to be so good. So back here as well, let's move the light in. Back here as well, this is not displaying, this is not displaying. You kind of get the idea, like some of these areas display fine, whereas other areas just don't really display at all. This one actually worked pretty well, I'm surprised, but you kind of get the idea. This is the issue when you don't triangulate your models beforehand inside of Blender. Now let's see what happens if we actually go into Blender and triangulate this beforehand. Now I do want to mention there is a very specific way you want to triangulate your models and also this particular model is not optimized to be a game asset. You know a lot of this detail I would be baking in. So just keep that in mind. I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. So, and again, like I said, triangulations, there's a very particular strategy, which I won't discuss in this video. But if I just quickly add in a triangulate modifier here in Blender, I'm gonna turn on keep normals. Again, for whatever reason, Blender's triangulate modifier doesn't cause geometry overlaps. I don't know why, that's just how it works. Now these triangulations are not the most clean in certain areas. Um, if you want to learn more about triangulations, that's all covered in our game asset course because it's very, very in-depth stuff, but this should be fine for demonstration. I'm going to export this as triangulate, and then it doesn't matter what you name it, obviously, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring this here into substance. We're going to import this, I'm going to add the triangulate, just discard this one, and now let's see what happens. And just as expected, you can see not only did a lot of those shading problems go away because we turned on that keep normal setting here, it also doesn't have any display issues because again, we forced the triangulation here in Blender before uh, we exported it. So Substance Painter has nothing to uh, triangulate. It's already triangulated. So here is fine. You know, if I go around here to the back, you know, this area is fine. We're not having any of those problems like we would have had if I let Substance Painter triangulate it for me. This is why a lot of people, you know, they get confused. They think you need quads for game assets when in fact it's just not true. In certain situations it may be true, but it's not true as a universal statement. The reason, like in this example like I showed you earlier, the reason this one would export fine 
is because there's only one way to physically triangulate this object. It goes corner to corner. So any software I bring this into, it's going to have the same issue. It's not really an issue, but it's going to triangulate corner to corner. Every single software, there's only one way to triangulate this. Whereas with NGONs, there's a bunch of different ways and you're leaving that up to the software, which is not a good idea. So whether I export this one with quads or whether I export this one with triangles, it doesn't matter because all the triangulations are going to work identically in any software you bring it into. Because again, you can only triangulate a quad corner to corner. So when people tell you, you know, you can't use quads with game assets, it's simply false. The reason they're saying that is because they run into those shading issues, those display issues, like I just showed you a bit earlier. But if you simply triangulate beforehand inside of Blender using a triangulate modifier, you are not going to have this issue. Now, I might make a different tutorial going in depth into how to clean up the triangulations because oftentimes they're not the most clean setups. Like, for example, here, and this is a very long triangulation. Usually, I would split this up into different segments. That's all, once again, covered in our game asset course if you're interested in that. But I might also make a video going much more in depth into triangulations and how to kind of clean those up. But hopefully, at this point, you kind of understand why this is simply incorrect. If you have a static game asset with NGONs, you simply need to triangulate beforehand inside of Blender before you export it. And if you have an object with all quads, just like this little bot right here, you don't need to triangulate anything. You can if you want to in Blender, it could be like a good idea, but it's really not necessary because everything is gonna be triangulated in one specific way outside of Blender because again, with quads, you just go corner to corner. So I hope that clears things up. I hope that makes sense. And I hope you understand that if you're creating a static game asset, you don't need to stress about having all you know quads everywhere. You can use NGONs. It's not a problem. But just make sure you're careful with the triangulations. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, if you want to grab our entire hard surface game asset 2.0 course for just 57 bucks, you can grab that in the description. That will expire in the next three days. So make sure you grab a copy within the next three days. That'll teach you everything from the modeling to the unwrapping to the decimation process to the triangulation process, literally everything that you need to know to create optimized hard surface game assets in Blender extremely quickly. So again, that'll be linked in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.